We face a number of important issues around privacy, safety, and democracy. And you will rightfully have some hard questions for me to answer. Before I talk about the steps we're taking to address them, I want to talk about how we got here. Facebook is an idealistic and optimistic company. For most of our existence, we focused on all of the good that connecting people can do. And as Facebook has grown, people everywhere have gotten a powerful new tool for staying connected to the people they love, for making their voices heard, and for building communities and businesses. Just recently, we've seen the Me Too movement and the March for Our Lives organized, at least in part, on Facebook. After Hurricane Harvey, people came together to raise more than $20 million for relief. And more than 70 million biz small businesses use Facebook to create jobs and grow. But it's clear now that we didn't do enough to prevent these tools from being used for harm as well. And that goes for fake news, for foreign interference in elections and hate speech, as well as developers and data privacy. We didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility, and that was a big mistake. And it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. I started Facebook, I run it, and I'm responsible for what happens here. From the Palace and Uncle Studios in beautiful Southern California, welcome to another edition of WorkCom Matters, the central location for all your workers' compensation, employment, and labor law matters. My name is Steve Appel, and I'll be your host for the next hour with some talk, some news, and hopefully some answers about WorkCom Matters. Thanks for being part of the show, and if you can break away from your work on matters, feel free to clue us in and give us a call with your questions, comments, and or concerns. The phone number worldwide, 818-357-4120. You can send an email to wcexaminer at aol.com. You can even be old school. Send a fax, 818-475-1437. With me in studio, my right-hand man, Mike Zima, the best-dressed man in California, workers' compensation, Ted Durden. My protege, attorney Robert Ozeron, technician Scott Walton on the board, and back at WorkCom Central, making sure the whole damn show goes right, is Jake Paris. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of WorkCom Matters. Of course, we're talking about Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. As everybody knows, he testified for two days, five hours yesterday and five hours today before Congress. For the first time in his life, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg appeared before Congress and today finished 10 hours of answering questions by Congress regarding data collection practices and privacy issues in the face of the Cambridge Analytical data scandal. Zuckerberg repeated and apologized, stating that Facebook made a big mistake by not taking a broad enough view of its responsibility. However, Zuckerberg would not commit to changing its default settings to minimize data collection or his business practices to the greatest extent possible. Rather than saying yes or no, the 33-year-old bil year old billionaire said this is a complex issue that deserves more than a one-word answer. Multiple legislators also raised the prospect that Facebook's data policies with third-party apps violated a 2011 agreement with the Federal Trade Commission after a prior privacy complaint. If so, Facebook could be subject to hefty fines. The Federal Trade Commission confirmed last month that it is, that it is investigating Facebook. The congressional hearings come nearly one month after the news broke that Cambridge Analytica, a data firm with ties to President Donald Trump's campaign, accessed information from as many as 87 million Facebook users without their knowledge, including but not limited to Mark Zuckerberg himself. Legislators also questioned Zuckerberg on his monopoly power, and Zuckerberg said that Facebook feels a lot of competition 
because the average American uses eight apps daily to stay connected to people. As an afterthought, Facebook stock is trading up 6% in the past 24 hours. Now, I've got to get my bias out of the way first, okay? First and foremost, A, I love Facebook, and as I told Mike yesterday, I have a man crush on Mark Zuckerberg. It is no secret, okay? I think Mark Zuckerman, uh, Zuckerberg is one of the most awesome humanoids on the friggin' planet, okay? 14 years ago, he was 19 years old. He was eventually a dropout at Harvard. And he started, I'm not sure if I want to call it a chat room, but he started a social media application. And for those of you that don't know, (laughs) this was a totally 100% misogynistic social platform. He started a, 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 a sort of like a chat room to rank the women or the girls or the female students at Harvard. They would talk about their face. They would talk about their bodies. They would talk about their asses. And they would be ranked on a scale of like one to five. Well, this, of course, eventually developed into what is happening now. Mark Zuckerberg is worth between uh, 25 and 30 billion dollars, and Facebook generates over 40 billion dollars a year, 90 over 98 percent of it in advertising. Now, that being said, I essentially started my on life, pardon me, my online life over 20, 25 years ago with AOL. And in fact, the account that I developed then, WC Examiner at AOL.com. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't want to call it old school. I'm calling it old, worn out, uh, ignorant, whatever. I still get the majority of my emails on my AOL account. Eventually, MySpace came in. I started a MySpace account, but you know what? To me, it wasn't very user-friendly. I really couldn't figure out how to use it. Then came LinkedIn, and I started a LinkedIn account, but it really wasn't user-friendly, and I really couldn't figure out how to use it. Then came Facebook, and Facebook was easy. Facebook was simple. Facebook was user-friendly, and I was all about Facebook. I am not into Instagram. I am not into Twitter. I'm not into Snapchat, but I absolutely love Facebook. In my mind, Facebook has given me the opportunity and the platform not only to uh, reach out friends from high school, and I've met a lot of friends through Facebook that I haven't communicated with in 30 years, but Additionally, it's been able for no charge for free. I've been able to advertise the brand of Work Comp Matters and Appel and Associates. Now, don't get me wrong. We wouldn't be here essentially if it wasn't for Work Comp Central. But because of the kind support and the weekly assistance by Work Comp Central, In addition to the free advertising and the promotion that I get from Facebook, we are slowly but surely growing like a small snowball, slowly going downhill, getting a little bigger each week, getting a little more popular each week. And I couldn't do it with our, our, I wouldn't have as much help unless we were able to put it on Facebook and get free advertising. Um, That's what I have to say about Facebook right off the bat. Um, I know Mike has a completely different view. Mike doesn't have a Facebook account. My wife does, though. Okay, well, good for her. Let's get her on the show, right? Total disclosure. (laughs) There you go. Uh, 
Ted does not have a Facebook account, but he's always telling me each week, Steve, when is the Workout Matters going to be posted? Because I got friends that are on Facebook and they want to see it. Don't you have it, but you don't use it? Well, I thought yeah. he didn't have it. No, I set up a, a Facebook account years ago when my kids did, but I've never used it ever, period. Never fully set it up at all. And then, of course, we have Robert, who I know for a fact uses it multiple times a day. It's helped his business grow. And, in fact, last week we were talking that it was on a Friday or a Saturday night when I posted the show on Daniel Brin, and I saw Robert posting on Facebook. And we, d- we did half a show uh, on that. Robert, um, would you say that Facebook, without question, has helped your business grow at an extremely minimal cost? At a no cost. Oh, right? uh, fine. At, at zero cost. At zero yeah. cost. Facebook is free. You can pay to run advertisements as well. So, you know, Facebook turns a profit on their own. Which if I you have not done do. yet. I have not done that yet. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Is it reasonable, the price? Yes, the prices are very reasonable. I've done it, actually. Uh, and you can start and stop. It's kind of like a taxi cab of advertising. It's very interesting. Uh, so it's a new type of model that you, you might actually enjoy. Easy to use. Uh, that said, I don't do it all the time. I have just a little experience. But I was, uh, on a personal note, one of the original Facebook users because I think he started it in 2003. Um, I don't want to date myself, but I, I think I graduated high school. 2003, 2004, that about 14 years ago, yeah, yes. Yeah, that's, like, that's the day I graduated high school. That year, 03 was that year. So uh, I was in college at, S, uh, at USC in 05, and I recall already having a Facebook account because at the time that Facebook was made, it was made actually, you register your classes. I don't know if anyone remembers this. This is gonna be for the original users. Mm -hmm. You could register your classes and you can only get a Facebook account back then if you had a college email address. It had to end in .usc or that something. Is, that is true. Now, and, right? They must know everything that. about you I, by I, this I time. Oh, right? I'm one of the originals. Yeah. Like, um, and if you've never seen if you've never seen the movie Social Network, it's all about the starting of Facebook. I mean, right. I'm, sh- I'm sure they take some artistic license, but it shows Zuckerberg originally and how he uh, started. How he started. But you would register your class, and then that way you can see other people who are also in your class. So if you missed a session, you could message this person randomly on Facebook, mm-hmm. right? You could friend them and you can say, hi, I'm in your class. I see we're both registered. And it really just started from there. Before that, then they started having a news feed separate from a wall. I mean, this is the original. This is very old now before Messenger and all of that. So I've seen the development of Facebook. I was never on MySpace in that original creation phase where everyone was picking and choosing. I picked Facebook right away. And I and I I kind of felt the ease to use it, and I, I thought this one is much better. Which I never is liked much MySpace. more user friendly, yeah. much more easier to use. Yeah, especially for me, for someone who was in class and you know looking for uh, another student to to simply message. Uh, it was a good idea at the time, and to see what it's turned into, uh, that was a little bit unforeseen, I must say. Did you see any of the congressional hearings? I watched all of it. Oh, there you go. Oh, but 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 here's. I, I'm only challenged by one thing that you just said, that what happened was unforeseen. And I, I'm going to have to take issue with that. And the only reason I say that is just like we talked about at the last podcast that we had. You know, when, when you're on the Internet and you're divulging information about yourself, it's out there in the ethosphere forever for anyone that can grab that information. And that's what happened here with Cambridge Analytica. You know, you have those 270,000 people that filled out that survey, and that connected them to all their friends, what Steve indicated, end up to being like 97 million people. Correct. Yeah. And, and again, and, and that's that might be the appeal, but that's also the flaw in it as well. Well. Because the, and again, like, and as they indicated, that's how certain Facebook members are targeted based upon the information that they divulge on their website, on their Facebook page. And I know, Ted, you want to speak a little bit more, but of course, uh, this is advertiser-supported podcast slash radio. 
We don't charge our listeners uh, to listen. Our listeners are free. All you got to do is click. And by the way, if you're listening on WorkComp Central or if you're listening on YouTube, please subscribe if you like us. And if you don't like us, well, subscribe and tell a friend. Anyways, my name is Steve Appel. You're listening to Work Comp Matters. We're brought to you by A1 Law. If you want the number one computer management system used by more workers' compensation attorneys than any other system on the planet, give me a call at 818-357-4120 for your no-strings-attached money-back guarantee, $1 a day, A1 Law. And if you want those hard-to-get, sold-out, even front row, concerts, sports, theater tickets. Give our buddy Brian a call at Santa Monica Tickets, 310-395-8587. It's time for our our first musical break, and we'll be back with some more talk, some more news, and hopefully some answers about Mark Zuckerberg and Work Comp Matters. How does it feel to be one of the beautiful people? Now that you know who you are. What do you want to be? And have you traveled very far? Far as the eye can see. Baby, you're a rich man. Baby, you're a rich man too. You keep all your money in a big brown bag inside a zoo. What a thing to do. How does it feel to be one of the beautiful on uh, work comp matters we're talking about mark zuckerberg and facebook uh ted was talking uh and he wanted to finish some thoughts go ahead my man okay and the one other thing that came out during uh, while mark zuckerberg was testifying in congress he was asked a very direct question that if facebook deletes use the data when someone deletes their account and zuckerberg said yes but it's not that simple Basically, what they indicated is if you permanently delete your account, you won't be able to access any information or content that you shared in the past. However, some third party apps may still have access to some of it. Even when you delete your account, it can take up to 90 days for Facebook to remove the content like photos and updates stored in the backup systems. But some information, such as messaging history, can still be seen by the Facebook user you wrote. To even after your account was deleted. Well, yeah, it's it's not only that, and I'm sorry for interrupting, but no, for okay. example, we we did the show last week, and I was seeing what Robert was posting. What's to stop me from simply cutting and pasting what Robert posted on his Facebook 
I can put it on my Facebook or I can message or share it out to 500 people. Robert goes ahead, let's say, and he closes his account the very next day. Well, it all the information is still up to all of the people I sent it to. I mean, to me, that's common sense. No, and I agree to 100 percent. And so that's why I indicated, like I said, what that it could not have been foreseen. It had to have been. And again, that is the beauty and that is the peril behind Facebook. So, now, bo- oh, boss, sure, if I may, sure. I watched the the hearings with, with Zuckerberg and, you know, I think we talked about how he we thought he would do ahead of time. And and I said I thought he was going to do fantastic. I, th- I said I thought he was going to acknowledge what was doing wrong. And in fact, last week before, he already put into effect corrections of what they were going to complain to him. Go yeah, ahead. And I mean, we could debate how we think he did, but clearly the stock market thought that he did great uh, because it uh, went up. up six percent yeah. in the past twenty four hours. Absolutely, yes. And I must yes. say personally, I do think he did great. Also, now remember, yeah. of course, I the did stock. Too. Now remember, the stock dropped seven to ten percent within the past couple of weeks. Robert, and are you then talking it about much, the entire market or just the uh, He means stock. Facebook. Just the stock, Facebook. Okay. Facebook. Facebook. Symbol stock, FB right. for everybody talking out about there. about 6%. Yeah. Correct. Now, of course, my main concern, and then if I uh, – you can finish. My main conso- uh, concern, as I said all along, is when you sign up for Facebook, you have private information. I mean, I don't remember if they required my social security number, but my, my full name, my home address, maybe my driver's license – whatever that stuff i don't want being shared with anybody and if any of that was shared then as far as i'm concerned someone needs to be accountable but when i post something on my wall be it a comment or i share from someone else or i post pictures as far as i'm concerned that's gone off into the world wide web that's on the internet and anybody can do whatever they want Robert, so, go so this ahead. is what I gleaned from the hearings and Zuckerberg's comments. Uh, the data collection issue seems actually to be something that is seemingly on the end towards resolution. It seems to be resolved, right? He talked about the two types of data, what you share and I think what you like or something like that. Um, like I, I can't specifically remember the second column. But he talks about how the person's going to be able to manage that more in the future and have easier access. That seemed to be something he can answer uh, easily. The more interesting question from the uh, hearings, I thought, which hasn't been raised yet, was the fact that they are censoring certain types of speech on Facebook, correct? Well, that was the accusation. And if you saw the, the, the well, five... Well, it's a fact. It, well, I wasn't aware that You're it was a about fact. Cruz's I was allegation? going to say Cruz cross-examining well, him about whether or not he well, censored any right-wing speech. I, I'll um, clarify. Or There's ads. already censorship, right? There, You can't post terrorists stuff up there. Well, you Zuckerberg can't post said dead you, bodies you, 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 and stuff like that. There's already censorship in the community. The no, question is where they draw the line. Well, apparently, according to Zuckerberg, they draw the line at hate speech. They draw the line at physical violence. Oh, well, that's actually what I was going to talk about is their interpretation of what hate speech is, right? Because that's become the question. They have canceled, what is it, Skin and Diamond? What, what are their names? The conservative uh, comedians, the two female black comedians? I know Roseanne commented it on that. That's very current. That's yes. very recent, like in the last 48 hours. Correct. Right? And actually, Zuckerberg said in response directly to that, that he's going to reinstitute their accounts because they were canceled. They were terminated for violating the terms of service. So that's the real issue, not the data collection. It seems that Zuckerberg has a good handle on the collection of data in the future. It seems from the, the hearings. That's a good question because... And again, I know it's all it's objective as far as what constitutes hate speech. So these, the skin and diamond, whoever they were, do you have any idea what they were posting that it was construed as hate speech? I don't actually. Does anyone okay. know? All I know is that I saw a headline that said they were Trump supporters. That's yeah. all I heard and, and I know or that, saw. And I see that they're generally accepted on some of the mainstream media channels, so I assume that it can't be too extreme, but I actually f- personally didn't look into them yet. Okay. That said, the, the question isn't you know them specific, even though for Mr. Zuckerberg today it was actually one time specific to them. The question is what constitutes hate speech and the violation of the terms of service? And Mr. Zuckerberg said today, well, we like to have a diversity in our uh, community there at Facebook. We have 20,000 people. We're planning on bringing a board total to police this community standards, and we have diversity. Look at our statistics, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, they don't have diversity because they don't have diversity of thought. They have diversity of skin color, 
but they don't have diversity of thought. They have everybody up in the Bay Area. And I believe there was a senator from Montana said, you know what you need? You need people. Open your next headquarters here. Let us police it. We're Zuckerberg much more neutral. even admitted that because they are in the Silicon Valley area, it is quite left. Correct. And he admitted it. Yeah, and everybody generally knows that Facebook is a left-leaning company, right? Mr. Zuckerberg himself admitted it, that he supports the Me Too movement and the March for Our Lives. These are all, these are all things that you, fall I, to the left I, of the aisle standard. I, I got a couple of hundred friends on my Facebook. It wasn't until uh, Facebook that I realized that some of them were, quote, right-wing wackos, close quote. Wouldn't bother me if some of them got censored. <laughs> well, okay, but, well, it does, it should bother you, though, because you don't want your speech to be censored next, well, right? Well, they're, they're not what, censored. That's my whole point. Well, yes. The question is, right, what should be censored and what shouldn't be censored? And, of course, Zuckerberg today talked about the fact that there's absolute, you know, no censorship from the government, but there's no First Amendment right at a private company. It's my forum. I started it. It's my community, he said. I'll police it as I see fit. You know, generally he wants to be fair, and we believe him. You know, he looks like a good guy when he says it. But it's so obvious, and it's pervasive. His personal views have pervaded through the company, right? And they're, they're become almost a social movement if you start censoring the right and only promoting the left. Now you've become a media organization simply by excluding some and promoting others by filtering to the direction you want. Subject to different rules that there are media corporations, They are correct? subject to, yes. And that's the question that was also arose today. All kinds of FCC stuff, correct? Correct. So there's, it's very interesting that Facebook, there's so many angles to this company, uh, and there's a lot of ethical questions or philosophical questions about what to do with it. Should we police it? See, in my opinion, I don't think... If it is going to be police, it should be self-police because it is a private organization. It's like I've said before. Number one, you cannot legislate morality. You simply cannot do that. But the simple definition as far as what constitutes hate speech is going to be in any speech or language, anything in print or verbally that is going to incite violence towards other people. And actually, that's an interesting point, Ted, because hate speech doesn't always say violence, even though... It's designed to instigate violence. I'll specifically bring up, as I always do, the Nazis marching in Skokie, Illinois in 1972. The Supreme Court has ruled that the Nazis have a right to espouse their hate speech as long as they're not advocating violent speech. Please continue. No, you're absolutely right. And it is a very fine line that has to be walked. It really and truly does. But again... When you, when you get into government censorship, I'm sorry, that crosses a real big line for me. It really and truly does. And we have enough governmental regulation already sticking its fingers into our lives. When I think about the Patriot Act and all the liberties and freedoms we had to give up for the purposes of protecting this country, and I can, I can understand that to a certain extent, but we can't go overboard where you have governments then taking over private industries like that and sticking their fingers or their noses into that. I think that's just, it's going too far abroad. That's an excellent point because Mike and I were talking, and above all else, Facebook is a private entity, even though they are a public corporation. And their first objective is a fiduciary responsibility to the stockholders to make money. And like I said, I am totally amazed. I have a man crush on Mark Zuckerberg. He makes $40 billion a year gross. 98% of it is on advertising. The guy is 33 years old. And, you know, just forget it lights out my name is steve appel you're listening to work Comp matters we're brought to you by a1 law if you know if you want the number one computer management system used by more workers compensation attorneys than any other computer system on the planet give me a call at 818-357-4120 for your no strings attached money back guarantee one dollar a day a1 law and if you want those hard to get sold out even front row concert sports or theater tickets give our buddy brian a call at santa monica tickets 310-395-8587 we'll be back for some more news stories and some more talk and uh, hopefully some answers in addition to uh mark zuckerberg and facebook on work comp matters I've been living in the beach 
slipping up and sliding on the upside of down Let me tell you, baby, I have earned my crown Lord, don't let me be misunderstood Ain't got time to watch no grass grow Or a man with a Romeo Here's the ticket to the rodeo Lord, come on and love me like you could Don't say I ain't a lady I'm a single mother, got a family Sometimes you need a piece of candy A little bit of something good A little bit of something good See, I drive carpool and I do night school Social network Oh, I got my arms around the world Forget about your black book Come on, baby, take a good look Oh, the fish is jumping on the hook Oh, don't think I want it cause I would Don't say Folk rock sounds of Susan Scheller, something good on Work Comp Matters. We're brought to you by A1 Law. If you want the number one computer management system used by more California workers' compensation attorneys than any other system on the planet, give me a call, 818-357-4120 for your no-strings-attached money-back guarantee, $1 a day, A1 Law. And if you want those hard-to-get front row, even sold-out concert, sports, and theater tickets, Give our buddy Brian a call at Santa Monica Tickets, 310-395-8587. It's time for some news, and without further ado, he's my right-hand man. He keeps me in check and hopefully out of trouble at least 90% of the time, Mr. Mike Zima. At least 42 people were killed, and an estimated 500 people went to Syrian health facilities with, quote, signs and symptoms consistent with exposure to toxic chemicals, end quote, after the attack on the rebel-held town of Duma last weekend, according to reports by the World Health Organization. Medics on the ground in Duma, the last besieged town that was under opposition control in the enclave of eastern Ghouta, near Damascus, reported that hundreds of patients arrived on Saturday night with symptoms of exposure to toxic chemicals, which included frothing at the mouth, suffocation, dilated and constricted pupils, corneal burns, central cyanosis, a blue tinge to the skin, and a chlorine-like odor consistent with exposure to organophosphorus compounds. Sarin gas is such a chemical. And uh, Donald Trump has also uh, announced uh, that if any other uh, missiles or whatever with uh, any type of uh, toxic chemicals go up, 
He's going to basically blow him away with smart bombs. Well, he sent a tweet, boss. You want me to read the tweet? Please do. It says, and this is his quote from this morning. Russia vows to shoot down any and all missiles fired at Syria. Get ready, Russia, because they will be coming. Nice and new and smart. You shouldn't be partners with a gas-killing animal who kills his people and enjoys it. There was a two exclamation points there in the middle. I just well, that's know. good to know. Now, so he uses exclamation points. And too. again, I I'm not a part of Twitter. I'm I'm glad you are. Do you do you feel like the president is speaking to you every day because of Twitter? I'm not on Twitter. Uh, oh, <laughs> but everything Trump posts on Twitter immediately yeah. gets reposted and yeah. retweeted all across the internet. So you'll see it nearly you know as fast as if you were on Twitter. But I just thought that was very interesting because then I saw the news later. And uh, so I wrote like a little bit of a comment there. I wrote, Democrats yesterday, Trump is in collusion with Russia. Democrats today, Trump needs a better relationship with Russia. Ted, you tweet? <laughs> you can't no, beat that. No, yeah. I, no. I don't, I, don't, I don't tweet. I don't Snapchat. I don't Instagram. I, I don't do any of that. No, that's, that's not my wheelhouse. Okay, it's, it's, it's uh, the two of you who wants the next news story. Um, go, go ahead, sure. my boy. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait a second. I've known him for five and a half years when he uh, first crawled into my office on all fours like a little puppy dog wanting a little bit of water, a little bit of milk, and some food. Okay, I nourished him, I raised him, I brushed him, I taught him how to uh, uh, take showers and keep himself clean. And now, five and a half years later, uh, he hung his own shingle, he has his own business, he's got his own employees, he's an applicant attorney extraordinaire, and about uh, uh, maybe half of what I just said is true. But we still partner, and I love him. He's my protege, attorney, Robert Ozeron. Well, th- thank you for the intro there, boss. I think you might have conflated my history and your son's history there at the end. You know, okay, just well, kind of... Well, now that you mention it, Mike, what does conflated mean? <laughs> inflated. Or oh, no, well, associated I he, I, with. I thought he said conflated. Con- associated it with. It means you like mix two things together. You overlap right, things yeah. that don't necessarily need to be together, right? Okay. You conflate ideas sometimes. Uh-huh. Not you, just saying that's a way of saying things. Even yeah. though that may have been conflated. Right, the history of your son mixed with my history uh, with working with you. No, no, I well, uh, I, I I call you my boy. Yes, you're you're absolutely right. And and to this day, five and a half li- years later, he hasn't said, "Boss, please stop that." Just call me Attorney Robert Ozeron. <laughs> no, so I no. I keep doing it because it, it, it at least for now makes for good radio. What can I tell you? And it keeps me humble. Right <laughs> there, that's you the guys most have a way point. of humbling me all the time. Actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> okay, my boy. It's a service we provide. It's right. a service. Well, exactly. speaking of humbled, we'll do the next news story. <laughs> yeah, please. Do. U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Paul Ryan announced today that he will not seek re-election in November. Congressman Ryan said he will serve until the end of his term in January, which will mark 20 years in Congress. Many in Congress believe his successor will either be House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy of California or House Majority Whip Steve Scalise of Louisiana. Ryan pointed to the recently enacted overhaul of the tax code, increased military spending as his greatest accomplishments while in office. However, he did not mention his greatest failure, which of course is the overhaul of Obamacare, and his following statement to Republicans during the primary vote for anyone except Donald Trump. (laughs) Ryan also said, uh, I'm going to move on and do other things in my life that can be fleeting, namely time as a husband and a father. It should be noted he mentioned that last. Yeah, I, I, I am. I am so glad that you mentioned Sounds that you read that right story there, because um, Ryan is uh, forty-eight years old, and he started off in the House twenty years ago at twenty-eight, and now only at forty-eight years old. He is the uh, Speaker of the House. Just incredible. I mean, what, Tip O'Neill was in his 70s back right. way when? Yes. And um, a- as he said, his father died when he was 16 of a weak heart. Um, I don't think Ryan is an attorney. I know for a fact he's a CPA in his state of Wyoming. Right. And um, the Wisconsin. One, uh, thank Wisconsin, you, Wisconsin. Yeah, he's an accountant. And his only regrets have been that he has been a weekend father and husband. And the main reason what he's saying, why he's leaving now to retire at 48, is because he doesn't want to see his daughter, his 16-year-old daughter, 
uh, grow up uh, without him. And um, that, to me, is honorable. And he's still going to be a valuable contributor uh, to the House of uh, Representatives. But, um, no, I've always liked Paul Ryan. Um, never had I a, have, too. Except uh, when he came out and said, vote for anybody except Trump. Now, mind you, I didn't vote for Donald Trump. I've said it publicly before. I voted for the Libertarian. But how can you be the Speaker of the House, the majority are Republicans or for your own party, and then you come out in the Republican primary, which is why I wrote the story that way, and say, vote for anybody but Donald Trump? Oh, I guess I uh, inferred that. You know, I put that onto Paul Ryan. I'm sure no, no, family was the number one yeah, reason. I, yeah. I think the reason that he probably came out like that is – when you look at Trump during the during the primary, when you look at his character or, or his affect during the debates, he wasn't very presidential. I still don't think that he you mean is. Little Marco having yeah. small hands, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, all right. I mean, I, I don't think. Ted, put it, your hands up in the middle of the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I've, yeah, I've, yeah, I've got big yeah, hands. Yeah, and you big don't want to compete with Ted. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're gonna, that's not going to you know make that. you feel good about yourself. You know what they say about people with big feet and big hands? Got big, big shoes and, and big, big gloves. gloves. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> fin, finish, finish your thought, please. Uh, the, the, the point is, I, I don't think it's it's becoming of any person that's in government that, that denigrates and degrades anybody. Period. I don't care if it's a political opponent. I don't care who it is. The little Marco Rubio. Um, I can't remember the female candidate that he said was Carly not Fiorina, a Fiorina, right? Not a nickname for everybody. I, I know. I mean, Fiorina really, from. Uh, yes, Fiorina. Yeah. Fiorina. I, I, and I think that's probably why, because he saw all the discord that he was creating. Now, it worked to his advantage, it really and truly did. Kind of like know. a shock jock, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it really and truly did, because what he did is. He appealed to that disenfranchised part of America that felt like they were being left behind. In spite of the fact of how rich he was, he was able to touch on that nerve. Well, when you hide underground with all of your uh, uh, total right-wing thoughts and your guns and your skinheads, uh, he gave them uh, an, an opportunity to uh, come out and make themselves known. He did, and, and that, to me, that's tragic because... When he did that, by the way that he presented himself, he validated them. He did. He gave them credibility. And, and I think— Which, of course, he's denied every I, day until now. But, but go ahead. You're yeah, right. Yeah, but, and I think that's to, us, de- that's to this country's detriment. It really and truly is. Now we know that they're out there. Racism, prejudice, it's always out there. Yeah, but look at look at look at what happened because of that. Because they've now been recognized. And I believe all of us can agree that when you talk about your major um, gun supporters, mm-hmm. um, that what I refer to um, as the skinheads and the neo Nazis and the ultra right conservatives that were keeping quiet and down underneath. Now they've come up above ground. They've exercised their thought. But what's the general consensus, uh, what you hear at least on social media, about guns and everything that's going on? They, well, boss, we, we now want them controlled, right? I, I would avoid conflating uh, right-wing radicals and people who support the Second Amendment, right? None of the uh, mass shooters are NRA members. None. They're PETA members. But not NRA members, okay? So we should remember that when we're talking about radicals and people You're who support the Second correct. Amendment. Correct. Listen, people who I can guarantee you, if you walk into NRA and you ask them if they support Nazis, ninety-nine percent will say, I, "I if one was in front of me, I'd probably shoot him." So these are the people whose ancestors fought and died in World War II. A lot of them, okay? They love America, and if you love America, you you should love all of the you know the amendments generally, right? Um, you know, some are better than others. Some revoke others. We get it. But, you know, you should love what the country stands for. And a lot of them do. So I would avoid conflating those two things. But as far as Donald Trump and the election, to go back to Ted real quick, uh, I do think uh, for a lot of moderate people, it's very difficult to separate his um, comments and actions on the uh, election campaign from uh, him now as president. 
I know uh, it's difficult for me to even do that, and I want to give people a fresh start and a benefit of the doubt, right? And I represent a lot of Latinos who did not take to Trump kindly, and uh, I just tell you right now, I did not vote probably for him. Still, probably still, I know still you guys are shocked. Trump. I did not vote for Trump. Okay? I'm not shocked. Uh, I didn't vote for Hillary either, I, I, and I didn't no, vote for I'm Libertarian. Not shocked. I just couldn't support them. I just didn't want to. But um, well, did you vote? Uh, yeah, just oh, not okay. on the pre- just not for president. I voted for local measures. So you didn't vote. Yeah, I cared for about president. No, I didn't. Okay. I, 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 I well, I showed up there. I just didn't put a. Bo- uh, I didn't vote. Right, I couldn't support him at the time. That said, his results have been pretty damn good. I can't, I, you know, I look at the scoreboard and I go, uh, I don't like the way you got there. Yeah, Un- you know un- what I mean? But un- the scoreboard is what it is. Un- and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept that. Unemployment is down. Um, the gallon of gas price is about the same as when he was elected. The, um, the stock market's great. The stock market is clearly up. And the 30-year uh, mortgage is down. And consumer yeah, but, confidence but, but, is but, sky but high. Here's, and but consumer here's, confidence is sky high. Yeah, but here's my issue with that, because it's always interesting to me how that opinion varies depending on who is in office. Because when there was an increase in jobs while Obama was in office, the Republicans would say, well, the presidency doesn't affect, you know, the jobless rate. And when and when the stock market went up, no, that doesn't have anything to do with the Obama administration. So you can't, but when a Republican is in office, you have the Democrats that say the same thing. So I, I don't put a whole lot of weight in that, right? because the reality is the person that is sitting in that White House really and truly does have very little to do with what goes on in the stock market or what goes on as far as jobs are concerned. You might try to implement things. You might try to do that, but that's going to depend on what the economy is doing. I have to totally disagree with you, Ted, because uh, I don't think it's because of Obama or just luck or just a coincidence that our stock market is higher now than it's ever been before. It's because arguably and advertised, we have a businessman running the country and not a politician. Yeah, and to actually echo that, uh, I watch uh, CNBC every morning, uh, follow the stock market, right? And um, actually, that's where I watched uh, Zuckerberg's testimony. They aired it live the full two days. Uh, And uh, every morning, if you wake up with a Trump tweet and it's some sort of sable rattling about war, you're like, oh, geez, my investments. You know, you know you're going to open up the market. It's going to be all red across the screen. It's I'd gonna much look rather wake up with a Bloody Mary, but go ahead. Well, yeah. But if you wake up and Trump has got a, a new quote from the president of China saying, you know what, I guess we will try to stop stealing all of your, you know, your designs. My bad. You know, that one, you wake up, and you're like, oh, this is great news. You look at your, your portfolio, if you got one, and it should be all up. It should be all green. So... Uh, while I agree generally, you know, the fundamentals of a lot of companies mm-hmm. and when, uh, and a lot of stocks are based on fundamentals in part uh, are independent of the president and his uh, opinions, uh, even though I do believe the tax uh, rates will affect it in the future. Right. That's part of the fundamentals for Trump and consumer confidence and the psychology of the market. I mean, wow. Every day is like, which way is the wind blowing? It's, that's how it feels. I keep a well, cool it's been head. Very volatile. too. Well, yeah, yeah, I keep a cool been. head. I, I just say, you know what? I like the fundamentals of the companies, but the run up from what was it? 18,000 to 26,000 in the Dow. That, I mean, wow, that's yeah. never happened ever to, you have to give credit to the tax cuts. Everyone on CNBC in the morning gave it credit. I mean, everyone who does stocks in the morning and watches it on TV begrudgingly gives it the, gives credit where it's due. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how I feel now. It's kind of like begrudging. I don't know if I would support Trump for a second uh, term, but the results are pretty good right now, especially if North Korea de- denuclearize. If that happens, you know, we can just stop talking. Right, yeah. <laughs> Syria is going to be big, though, too. Yeah, that's very true. But even even what Steve was saying, that you, we have a businessman in the White House, he's not the first businessman to sit in that seat. You can even go back as just as recent as George W. Jr. He was a, he was a businessman. And, and again... He had very little to do with either the stock market um, or the jobless rate, period. So, again, Trump isn't the first businessman to sit in that seat. Um, If I'm not mistaken, and Mike, it's up to you. You've got a a segment you want to do on uh, Zuckerberg and Facebook? I do. All right. Well, I've already introduced you, so um, go ahead. Okay. And, uh, Steve, we talked uh, earlier about how— We disagree. I get it. We disagree. 
I don't buy Mark Zuckerberg. I don't get Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg is a monopolist. Like most, if not all, monopolists, Zuckerberg for sure is remarkably bright. Also, like most, if not all, monopolists, Zuckerberg did not start out with an intention to become a monopolist. Somewhere along the way, greed took over. I don't begrudge wealth. I am not in awe of it, however. The success of most monopolists historically included advancements in science and technology. Most monopolists were also philanthropic. Zuckerberg fits the mold. Facebook is a wonderful kumbaya platform to keep friends and family in touch. Peel back the veneer, however, and one sees just another business, except this one monetizes data. Zuckerberg would have been happy to carry on with the status quo, stuffing billions into his pockets and vaults, had it not been for the fact that the Cambridge Analytical scandal broke into the news. And so the apology tour began. Into the fold stepped the cherubic Mark Zuckerberg with his Mona Lisa smile. I watched and listened to as much of his presentation as I could stand, screaming BS at the TV screen on a number of occasions. For example, Zuckerberg said more than once that Facebook does not sell information or data. Nonsense. However, the activity is performed, however the activity is performed, whether the business model, whatever the business model, Facebook places data into the stream of commerce, if you will. Would the Cambridge Analytica situation have occurred without data from Facebook? How about this one? Users control everything. Did the 87 million users or more who had their information and their friends' information transferred control Cambridge Analytica getting a hold of it? How does Zuckerberg get away with making a statement like that? I am not the most tech-savvy person in the world. 99% of my use of technology is in the workplace. I am not on Facebook, although in the interest of full disclosure, my wife is to a limited extent. I rely on my wife to bring me up to date on relevant postings of family and friends for this specific for purpose. Facebook is marvelous. But Mr. Zuckerberg, stop presenting this marvelous feature as an example of the altruism of you and your company. Your remarkably profitable company employs legions of business people incentivized to keep the dollars flowing and increase the flow of dollars. Yours is not simply an altruistic enterprise. That's right. It's a money-making business that generates $40 billion a year, which is why he's worth about $30 billion right now. And give himself about 10 years, and he will uh, it, he will probably be... Um, the richest man in the world. And by the way, and then I'll get to Robert in a moment, uh, I can go on to all of my friends' Facebook sites. I can cut and paste all of that information onto a Word document, and if I can find somebody who wants to buy it, there's no law against me selling it. Go ahead, Robert. No, and there's not, but I'm not sure who would want that because right. <laughs> Facebook's, Facebook doesn't necessarily sell raw data. What they sell is targeted advertisements, which is you as a company, a, a, a company that wants to advertise to potential customers, want to advertise with Facebook because you could tag certain terms in your advertisement and because facebook has data that knows that this person is matched with that term they'll put that ad in front of their face right. you and, right? I, you, you, and I understood that's, that's the, the bang for the too. buck you yeah. and i represent <coughs> uh you and i have businesses that represent injured workers if we were to pay facebook money we would ask them to target people that have been injured on the job and potentially people that have had problems with their job. It's even easier than that, boss. When you upload your ad, let's say you have a file on your computer with an image, right? And the image meets the criteria for size, moving past the technical aspects of this. You simply upload the image. They ask you what type of ad you'd like to run, the, the, the frequency of it, because you get billed per uh, use of it, right? And you set a budget, a weekly budget, a monthly budget. I like this to be 10 bucks a month. 
or you just drag the little feature to the right and it's more money now kind of like you know i like to spend a hundred dollars a month can it be as little as 10 bucks yes a month? it can wow. and that's why it's so it's such a open uh platform for for so many uh, up-and-coming businesses to use this to get directly in, in front of you know their potential consumers and what's also interesting about the their advertisements is you know sure this is how they make money now Right, and they don't make money through data collection uh, as they make selling money it. through selling advertising. Correct, it's an advertising company. But uh, moving beyond these congressional hearings, Facebook and a lot of the senators and you know people in Congress brought it up. It's an American success story. There's no question about it. I know you're very uh, in support of Facebook and that absolutely term, right. And Mark Zuckerberg is an American success story himself, absolutely. right? In his dorm room, just like Google started in a dorm room, right? These companies started just uh, like early. Microsoft started in a dorm room. Yes, That's right, exactly. Right. So right now in Europe, there is legislation being proposed uh, regarding the policing of data. This is the first step in regards to the policing of Facebook across, you know, the globe. Now, we need to protect Facebook. While we can keep this fighting in-house, you know, what we need to do to perfect it, it's a, you know, this is a, a living, breathing company that uh, got large quickly, and sometimes there's unforeseen things that, you know, we talked about, the concerns Ted and we, we, we discussed. But we have to protect our investment. These other country, uh, countries are going to start taking shots at Facebook, no doubt, looking to bleed them dry, take money, take them to international Interesting courts. how you say our investment. In this other is words, an American investment. No, no, I, no, no I, I, I don't own any stock in Facebook. I'm assuming you don't. I don't know. But you're referring to the fact that both of us use Facebook on a regular basis both of us have it as a percentage of our business model, and therefore we are protecting our investment. I'm so glad you said well, that, if I got it right. Yeah, well, but beyond simply just you and you're in my personal advertisements, Facebook's a, what is it, $400, $500 billion company? I think it's something like $400 billion right now, total market cap. It's one of the S&P, you know, top 500 companies, things of that nature. Right. This is a huge generator of wealth for the American economy ever since it started. Just like Amazon, just like Microsoft, just like Google, you know, innovation, tech. This is why America is However, the richest the country in the world. The only difference is like work comp matters, it's free. Well, yeah, but this is also why we have to protect our our intellectual property. Exactly. Right? And China has been ripping us off on our intellectual property every, you know, every chance they Robert, get. Robert, just so I understand, your concern with the European regulation is that it's going to allow the European tech companies to bleed Facebook? No, not the tech companies. European tech, Euro, Facebook is in Europe as much as it is here. Everyone's yeah. on Facebook. They may have a different ending, right? If you're Canadian, it's .ca, I think. If you're in some other mm -hmm. Country, it's whatever the ending is there, not .com like we have here. But these companies see an opportunity now, or these countries, these politicians looking to you know curry favor, just like here. Everyone wants their 15 minutes to take a shot at Zuckerberg, right? Make some money for their country. Uh, you're going to see that we need to, in fact, protect Facebook from these uh, potential uh, threats uh, in order to protect our investment, protect our economy. Um, I couldn't have said it better. Excellent words. We've got one last news story of the night, um, and uh, we will close out Work Comp Matters. Um, I've known him for 20 years. He's a gentleman, a scholar, and um, I guess he's a Facebook member. I'm not sure. The best dressed man in Work Compensation, <laughs> Mr. Ted Dirt. All right. Thank you, Steve. President Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, broke his sinus yesterday after the FBI raided his office, home, and his hotel room. I am unhappy to have my personal residence and office raided, but I will tell you that members of the FBI that conducted the search and seizure were all extremely professional, courteous, and respectful, and I thank them at the conclusion. Cohen's statements to the news media are totally different than those of President Trump, no who kidding. called the raid <laughs> disgraceful and an attack on our country. We're coming towards the end, but I, I'm glad you read the story. Robert, I want to ask Attorney Robert Ozeron, what does it take to legally raid and confiscate the President of the United States personal attorney's office, home, and hotel room? A special prosecutor helps. Eh? Okay, so like any search warrant, 
It must state with particularity the items to be searched for, the pla- the items that you're looking for, and the places to be searched. Now, this okay? search warrant did not have to be uh, authored by a judge. It could be authored by... It a, came from the special prosecutor's from office, the special. did it not, Robert? Okay, well, the... So, yeah, yeah, that was a question, not a statement, by the way. Well, I don't know where this subpoena originated. I'm supposing it's going to originate with Mr. Mueller, who himself has subpoena oh, power. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Correct. okay, fair Because he is a special prosecutor, gotcha. I would assume. Yeah. I don't think he even has to go to a court. But uh, that said, he does have to go to a special master. Mm-hmm. A special master is going to be an independent attorney, usually someone from the bar, who will oversee the inspection of the attorney's office. Because and, of course, in workers' comp, when we're dealing with arbitration or whatnot, we have discovery masters in California workers' compensation. But go ahead. Yeah, but, yeah, but a special master is slightly different. He's someone who brought in specifically to make sure that you don't go through this lawyer's files on everybody, right? Some overbroad in- invasion mm-hmm. of privacy, uh, something like that, okay? Now, I think what the comments were from uh, the attorney himself was that the FBI agents who raided the office, they were all pros, right? They're all very respectful. They probably begrudgingly did it like a uh, high knock knock. We have this uh, search warrant. We're so sorry. Mr. Mueller issued it. Um, you know, we'll get in and out nice and clean. We promise we won't break anything. And can right? we get your autograph? Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Right? <laughs> right? But we have to do what he says type of deal. Got any pictures of Stormy laying around? <laughs> That's, you know what, they were probably actually looking for it. You'd be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if that was actually listed on the warrant. Pictures of pornographic actress that indicates that Trump's lying about something or somewhere. I don't know. But well, we, actually, we don't ask, have access to the warrant, so it, we don't know. Actually, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, it did because the $130,000 payment has always been alleged to be a campaign spending violation depending Correct. on all the issues surrounding it. I won't get into it, but go ahead, Robert, finish well, your thought. I mean, they must be alleging some sort of crime that they've stated what it is, right? They have to have good cause. I, I doubt Mr. Mueller would expose himself on such a level with uh, without anything, just a thin air. So for Trump to say that it's a total wind shot might, might be true, be, at the same time, you know, he's motivated to find something. He looks like he's kind of has carte blanche to go and look for it. Yes. Uh, and at the same time, you have the FBI raiding, you know, this lawyer's office, hotel room, his house. And uh, you got them, what, not following up on you tips know, in this Florida school shooter because they don't have time for that? I wonder. Right? I've just the priorities of, I, in this world are just out of whack. I thought of it just now, this moment when you were talking. What if Trump coming out last week and saying, I had no knowledge of it whatsoever. That's what Stormy's attorney said. It sunk him. That's what And then all of the sudden the the subpoena was issued. Well, if Trump has no knowledge of it, then we're going to go ahead and raid the office and the hotel room and the house. Maybe Trump sunk his own attorney's ship. I don't I think know about he did. that. I, I think he did more harm than good. I think he did more harm than good when he came up with that When statement. he said that, I'm saying, why don't you just keep your mouth shut? Right, because of the fact that his attorneys had been saying on it, it had been rumored that he had signed the deal. So if that initials, whatever, the DD or whatever that was, if that wasn't you, then it's not binding on Stormy Daniels. It isn't. She can talk to whoever she wants to about this alleged affair. Yeah, and I guess in every president's history, right, there's always that side investigation into whoever they were sleeping with. But not it's as, just pu- like every not single as one. public as this is. This is um, like no. Well, I don't know. Clinton before. was pretty bad. There was Monica. 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 Yeah. yeah. Who can yeah. Oh, Monica. went to my high school, proud Norman. That's right. But, uh, said that. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We shoot for the best. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, you know, straight to the White House. You never said how we we're going to get there. That's right? right. We say we end up in the White House one way or another. So uh, we got there. Uh, not in the best circumstances, but whatever. We'll move past that. Uh, so I think everyone but Obama, right, had a, had a side girl. Uh, right? Uh, that, uh, well, uh, as far I, as we I know. never heard as, as far as, as allegations go. As far as, as, far as, as we know. Both Bushes, I don't think, had the... Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. The no, Bushes never right, had no. a side... That's any, right. That is correct. That we so, know of. So and Ron, Ronnie didn't have anything. <laughs> Correct. I don't know about. I don't think, think Carter so? did. Oh, really? Ronald Reagan. You're right. He was very no, he old-fashioned. No, he yeah, did. he was old-fashioned. Neither, neither did Jimmy Carter. Jimmy you're Carter right. did. Jimmy Carter did not. Nixon. I don't know. 
<laughs> no, and never, uh, never that, that. that See, is this is what to... I'm talking about. We're always talking about yeah. these guys, who these people are sleeping with. You know, we're disregarding these threats out in the world. Well, we just want to we, talk we about who's sleeping with who. We start the show about Mark Zuckerberg 14 years ago rating female college women, and we end up talking <laughs> about female women that are supposedly sleeping with the president of the United States. Where else but on Work Comp Matters? I'd love to talk more, but you're going to have to wait till next week. From my right-hand man, keeping me in check and out of trouble 90% of the time, Mr. Mike Zima. For the best-dressed man in California workers' compensation, Mr. Ted Durden. From my protege, attorney Robert Ozeron. From Uncle's studio, engineering the show, Mr. Scott Walton. And, of course, back at Work Comp Central, for all the people at Work Comp Central, and a special thank you to Work Comp Central, who continue to support and approve of this project called Work Comp Matters, including, but not limited to, Leaf File and Jake Paris. My name is Steve Appel. We'll see you again next week for another edition of Work Comp Matters. 